Yellow! Hey bud, what's up? Oh, we're just getting going here. Place a disaster? Oh yeah, big time bud. Let's make this happen. Sounds good. I'll be up front. Bye. Let's go to the McDonald's house. Whoa. Let's go to the McDonald's. Let's go to the McDonald's house Whoa. and play some songs. McDonald's house. Ooh. Let's go to the McDonald's. Let's go to the McDonald's house Ooh. and play some songs. Thanks, everybody.
He tries to get back up, but his world spins around. He's just looking for a place to hide his crown. But he went too far and he'll never be found. It's Ryan's, it's Ryan's, spot of the week. It's Ryan's, it's Ryan's, spot of the week. Hola, señores, señor. Welcome to Cuba, okay? This week we're in Cuba. We're going to talk about some of the things in Cuba, like the palm trees, okay? Cohiba cigars, some of the best cigars in the world. Cristal Cerveza. I don't know how to say delicious in Spanish, but I tell you right now, it's delicious, okay? We got congas, bongas, chica bonitas, sexy ladies, pools, resorts, beards, missile crisis. You know any other missile crisis? Only in Cuba, okay? 1492, okay? Christopher Columbus sailing around. He found a bunch of shit already. Then he found Cuba, okay? Claims it for Spain. That's why they speak Spanish, okay? Then he probably, he found this thing next. I don't know what it is, they still don't know. It's one of the big mysteries of the world, all right? Right now it's a beer holder. He found cigar trees, okay? That was the cause of his death. You know, smoking too many cigars, he had the lung cancer. It prevented him from finding the spaghetti tree later on, um, which I discovered and got very fat. Let's see. So yeah, Castro, he was born somewhere in the 1920s, let's say 26, I think that's accurate. And uh, you know, raised on a farm, hanging out on the farm. You know he had a bunch of crazy animals. Rumor has it his real last name was actually Fidel Castration. Because he'll cut off your balls, man. You freak with him, he'll cut off your balls, okay? Apparently he was really smart, you know, but he didn't do well in school. Because he loved sports so much, you know. He was apparently he was very good at baseball. Bueno at baseball, you know. Castro, Canseco, Armstrong, they're all using the dope. Every one of them. Alright? I know you're up to it, Castro. Just admit it. And he started protesting against the current uh, regime, the current government. And, you know, people say that he was making, like, Castro 316 signs, you know, at a bristle board. And, you know, maybe he was, like, throwing baseballs through cigar shop windows. And Fidel Castro in Spanish? It's in the Spanish dictionary now, you know what it means? The super light heavyweight cigar champion of the world. So 1952, Castro tries to run the show. He wants to get elected. And what does he do? He shits his pants. Castro, two Guinness records. One, most milk produced by a cow in one day. 100 liters, and it's real. You can look it up. Number two, longest speech. Over seven hours. Can you imagine sitting through that? Hot as balls, million degrees. Cuba, I don't even care if it's in winter. It's still hot. No AC, no thank you. Apparently, Castro's main chef, Steven Seagal. Nobody's seen it coming. Catsup? No. Ketchup? See. Si. Castro believes and claims to have had over 634 attempts made on his life. A toxic cigar. You know, classics like guns and knives. What about a tainted strawberry daiquiri, alright? I'll get it all over my face because it's so damn good. This one doesn't have mercury in it, thank God. Chemically tainted diving suits, alright? You get in the diving suit, you're freaked. You're dead. Poison pills? Yeah, I know. He probably took them, thought they were modium, had the shits, right? Even a powder that he somehow, you know, you get it on your face, guess what? There goes your beard, Castro. Somebody wanted his beard gone to undermine his popularity. But if he didn't have a beard, pfft, I'm not voting for Castro. Freak that. So what do we learn from Castro? Number one, beards equals win, okay? Castro knew it, the people knew it. Number two, smoke cigars significantly, repetitively, as much as possible until your health deteriorates so badly. Then make the decision to give cigars to your enemies as a gift. It's Ryan's, it's Ryan's, spot of the week. It's Ryan's, it's Ryan's, so 
claque la fenêtre pour devant On ne reviendra plus en courant Et que la poignée pas trop erreur Et pour l'ouvrir en se débat Before we go any further, we gotta get these fucking barriers straightened out up here, okay? We need everybody to just move back, okay? Everybody on the floor, just move back, just move back. Come on, people, we need more room here now. Just move back, everybody, okay? Come on, people, move back. We can't do any more numbers until you move back. All right, let's do it. The Wacker!
nos fesses comme des shorts Pendant l'été sous ta semelle comme un chouïe Sur ta chemise préférée Comme une tache de rousseur Sur ton nez j'y serai Si je décidais Comme la doublure De ton manteau Comme la sueur Quand il fait trop chaud Je serai
the best albums in the history of the human being. Ah. Records we all should talk about. An album we could all listen to this week. Seven churches, buddy. Friggin' right, slip inside this house. So if you've been watching these McDonald's things for a while, uh, you might remember that Bold of the Woods is the fourth best album in the history of the human being. And you know, Julian Cope might even agree with me on that one. So here we are, many, many records after. We're up to number 32 now in the history of the human being. And this is not the third 34 hour elevators album, this is the second, this is the one before Bold of the Woods. If you want to get technical, you could say, but there's a fake live album. We're not going to talk about that because we're talking about the studio masterpieces that these guys did. So basically, everyone should has to understand, first of all, that these are the first guys to invent psychedelia. I probably mentioned that on the last installment. It wasn't the Grateful Dead. The first 34 Elevator album deserves to be in the top 100, and it is. But I'll tell you, it's this second album here that things got really, really serious. And that 1967 run in a lot more. And I'll tell you, this is it. From Austin, Texas, managed by Leland Rogers, Kenny Rogers' brother, the 13 Four Elevators, their second album. And I'll tell you, my God, we almost got to go into quietude. Because if you think of it, it was a teacher that taught at what was it, U of A, University of Austin? A lady. And, uh, uh, the parents and the mothers of the guys in 34 elevators weren't comfortable with their sons hanging out with this lady at all hours of the night. But they would read books of Eastern philosophy, they would talk about meditation and psychedelics, and she's part of it, as well as Clementine Hall, that helped bring this commune all together that is 34 elevators. And you can't really put stuff like that into words. You almost have to think about meditation, deserts, peyote, mezcal, and not really so much the pyramid in the eye, but more of the shadow that the pyramid cast. These guys knew. They knew so much that once their guitar player, Stacey Sutherland, after being caught by the cops, the cops told them to run so they could shoot them. But they just rather kill a hippie than have to deal with it in the red tape. Because that's the way it was. And, uh, and if you ever looked at a tree and really saw it for its full beauty, you would know that this album was, and it is, and I'm not going to make sense anymore because why should it? Stacy Thurman had nobody to love on this, and that's when he started coming into it. And everything Tommy rules. Rocky is beautiful. He's singing more and more of Clementine. And who do we have? It's not even John Ike Walton, I don't think. Or, um, what's his name? Danny Thurman. I think we got Danny Thomas now. Oh no, John Ike Walton. Or Danny Thomas. Or friggin'. Anyway, it's all crazy because you gotta go nuts. Dan Galeno, that was it. It's not Benny Thurn, it's Dan Galeno. Where is he now? It, I know it just doesn't make sense. You just have to listen to it. And this is 32, and this is psychedelic music, and it's beyond the realm of common sense. Think Venom, people, and then minus about, I don't know, 25 years. And this could be the one like we forced in where just nothing makes sense, but I don't care. You just have to think. And this is how I started too. We all heard you're gonna miss me, and you probably saw that stupid movie. But this is really where it starts. But I just lied to you because, you know, the kingdom of heaven, you don't know how young you are, it already existed. So remember that Austin is a special little jewel in the madness and the chaos and the brashness of Texas, and it's there where we grew so nice and beautiful and rose, and we and they taught the whole wide world, even people in Morocco are still being touched by this. So, psychedelic music, ZZ Top, but before that, it was 34 Elevators, and I'm also saying, sweet soul sounds are stirring my soul, just to 
super the convolute because nothing makes sense in this world anymore. It's psychedelic. It's the best form of music. It was the renaissance of the late 60s and that's all there is to it. And I have to say shut up and everything. Hitting for the ceiling. Mark's made a list of the best albums in the history of the human being. Ah. Records we all should talk about. Bad. An album we could all listen to this Everybody.